Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, we're looking at Litecoin. Now, last time we looked at Litecoin, we focused mainly on the halvings again, a bit like we're going to today. But the main difference today is I wanna to focus on the Bitcoin pair with Litecoin, not its US dollar pair too much. So just a quick recap of what we said. We basically looked at the time periods before the halving that it took Litecoin to crash on its US dollar pair. And we saw if we went to our first halving that Litecoin experienced, about two weeks before we had a big sell-off. If we went to the previous halving, the 2020 halving, we can see it took Litecoin about nine weeks, give or take, for its major sell-off. You could even argue 10 or 11, it's not too important. And then zooming in today, we can see that currently we are coming up to this nine week period. And we also spoke about a 21 week period where we could have a sell off. And we actually did have a bit of a sell off. Again, my last video on Litecoin was in early November. So that would be around this time here. Um, so we can see we did have a bit of a sell off, but we did reclaim our price pretty quickly afterwards. And this rationale basically came from Every time up towards the halving, we have what's called like a, well, what a lot of people call a mini bull run. And what that basically equates to is we have a, a sort of a smaller rally up, much smaller in terms of our usual bull runs, like we've seen in 2017, 2013, 2021, uh, you know, a lot smaller usually and then a pullback down to similar levels followed by another rally and then another sell-off come the halving so you can see if we zoom in here on the 2015 2016 time frame leading up to the 2016 halving we can see that litecoin has a rally it's sort of half rally in between its bull run years so every four years we have a bull run this one slap bang in the middle in 2015 we have a rally up and a pullback and then we have another rally up followed by a crash into the halving and if we take a look at the last halving, we can see that we have a rally up, followed by a crash down to similar levels, followed by a rally, followed by a crash into the halving. And then currently what we've had is we've had our rally, rally up, crash down to similar levels. At the start, that is, I meant to say, crash down to similar levels. And then potentially another rally, what we're seeing here, followed by this crash, if that's what you want to take it as. And a part of me does want to say that this is the crash and we'll just sort of go sideways from here. However, I think currently in the crypto space, there is a bit of an uncertainty around where the markets are going to go. There's a lot of talk of Bitcoin pulling back to 38K as it sort of approaches the bull market support band, which is a big potential that could very well play out. And if it does, most likely coins like Litecoin and all the other cryptos will see at least a bit of a pullback. And we can see that, you know, in the past, once Litecoin has had a sell off, Bitcoin has also had a sell off at a similar time. However, Litecoin would historically have dropped much further than Bitcoin. So again, we pulled this extra 12 week period back from uh, our nine weeks. Well, sorry, that's an error, I think, I'm not quite sure. Um, I did it on the daily, so it probably is fine. Just how the, the days are, it looks like three weeks. Anyway, um, this added 12 weeks here compared to our two, six and 12 basically comes from time doubling as we go on. And another thing I pointed out is that as time has gone on, Litecoin has become much less volatile in its price movements, whether that's moving up and down. We can see this was in a much shorter space, this rally and this drop down and then this other rally and then this other drop in a much more condensed space. This one went on for much longer compared to the previous. And then now this one's been the longest in terms of how long it's dragged out, but also the smallest in volatility. It stayed within a much more reasonable range. And one thing I'd like to point out before we move on to the Bitcoin pair is that Litecoin basically usually comes down to its lows that it sort of enters into after the halving. And we can see here now it's contradictory here to what I've just said, but I would kind of consider Litecoin had this huge move up and that's where it stayed within these last few years. So you could kind of consider it here, this sort of entry zone that Litecoin set in its ground foot. This is the lowest it went, sort of. This is where we had a few pullbacks anyway, at our lowest point. And Litecoin then revisited it not too long afterwards. And if we actually check how long it took Litecoin to revisit, it was about 83 weeks, about two and three quarter years. And if we check here how long it took for Litecoin to revisit, it was about 103 weeks, so about bang on two years. So not only is Litecoin spending more time in the bull run years and it's going up for longer, but maybe to similar levels, it's also doing the same during the bad times. It's taking much more time to do things. And you could sort of argue that why aren't you including this? Again, it's from where it happened out here. And I would expect for the next cycle, now that we've had almost two 
moves of within this range and we've seen it return down to this prior low that Litecoin sets in after it's halving. Again, I know contradictory here, but this is kind of the feeling that I get from Litecoin. After seeing it come down to retest this twice, both at a similar time frame afterwards, I would be comfortable to say Litecoin will probably play out in this way for a very long time. And now nothing in the crypto space is a certainty, but the fact that a lot of these moves are basically mirrors of each other, we can see we put in a higher, a similar price. We put in our lows a little higher, which could be Litecoin stabilizing. Again, I talked about Litecoin possibly being one of these coins that holds its value a lot more better than things like Bitcoin and all these other altcoins, like how Monero and Chainlink do potentially. But again, it's kind of up for interpretation. We have to see how it plays out. But so far, what they've done is kind of similar to what I think Bitcoin was envisioned for, to have a stable asset that you can hold that's not controlled by a government. One thing I will point out as well is, again, these lows do often return this third low potentially, first low, second low, third low, we do often see it return to these lows. If we take a look back where we were here, it's a lot harder to price this in, but if you're taking it from at least where we spent most of our time, the low does bring us back to kind of where we averaged out. So you could argue that maybe we've averaged out around here. This low has kept us in this average out range. So that's it. And we'll just trade sideways or upwards into the halving. You could argue that we will have another big move, a big correction. If Bitcoin's going to drop a couple thousand down to the 38K level, and there's talks of potentially 35 with them, um, I can't remember what moving average it was. I think it was the Bollinger Band moving average on the weekly or the daily. I can't quite remember, but there's talks of 35. If that was to potentially happen, we could see a serious correction from Litecoin that could bring it back down to here. But that is a complete hypothetical, of course. Now, moving to the Bitcoin pair with Litecoin, we can see it paints a much different picture, but it also looks like quite a stable one. And what we can see here is just breaking it down very quickly. What I've done is from each halving, so each cycle for Litecoin, basically on its Bitcoin pair, I've measured how far Litecoin moved from its top to its previous top. And that's from its, again, its peak from the previous cycle to its peak, the cycle afterwards. And we've done the same in terms of lows, and this is on its Bitcoin pair. And we've taken its low and how far it fell to reach its previous low. And again, we've done this again and again and again. And for this last one, I've taken the average basically halfway because we only have two of these moves where we've seen Litecoin drop each time it has dropped. So it's not safe to say, but likely that Litecoin will continue to drop on its Bitcoin pair. And we can see the first drop from peak to peak was 51% followed by 70%. So I've put in a 60% of a drop here potentially for our next one. You could argue that this is increasing and that this should be 90% or it should be 80%. It's kind of totally up to you. I'm going to go with 60%, but I might potentially take a look very quickly at an 80% because I think that could be something that might play out. It depends. And then these lows were both around 50%. So I should actually have this even lower and put it around here just so that we have a more accurate reading. Another interesting thing that I would like to point out about Litecoin on its Bitcoin pair is a pattern that it has seemed to have followed with its price over these last few cycles. And that is that it often spends about two years, one year before the halving, one year after the halving, trading downwards. If we take a more accurate reading of where Litecoin has gone over the year before and the year afterwards, we can see that it basically just trades down for these two years. And now it is a bit less than two years here, 609 days, but it basically 100 days before a year. So close to two years. If we go to what happened here, where we take from our high, our last sort of high before the halving, and we take it to our low before we put in a significant rally, you can see it's about, again, about 60, 50 days before two years. So again, rounding up, about two years, a year before and a year afterwards of trading down. If we take a look at Litecoin now and we take a look at where it's sort of been trading, now you could argue this is the top about 43 weeks before, 300 days before, close to a year. Or you could argue one of these is the top. Um, again, it kind of just trades down from this point. Either way, it's been going down and probably realistically, you're probably going to want to make this one your high. Litecoin has been trading down for over a year at this point in its current rally. And if it continues to play out the same way, we could expect it to continue to trade down on its Bitcoin pair. Now, I don't know any exchange where you can trade a Bitcoin Litecoin futures, but if I did, I would probably be shorting this coin right now. However, Interestingly, now that I say that, we do often see that if we zoom in here to 
very close to the halvings previously for Litecoin, we do get a bit of a rally. And we do actually rally above the bull market support band. And if we go back to our last uh, Litecoin move before the halving, it was again a rally above the bull market support band. Even if it was just for a couple of weeks and it did then pull back down below, it still rallied into the halving for a little while. Also, another thing to point out is that, again, this first halving cycle that we saw, Litecoin basically traded the Bitcoin halving at one of its lowest during that cycle. This most recent cycle we see it was very close to its low, but it wasn't in it. And it didn't actually sort of get to this low until months afterwards, but it did eventually get below and trade below. And if we take a look at currently where we are, we actually are in this low. And funnily enough, we'll see that we've actually had a bit of a move to the upside leading into the halving, like we've seen here and like we've seen back over here. And again, it does also seem to be playing out that we are in this low stage and our first Litecoin halving, we basically traded just above this all time cycle low for Litecoin. We could see that happen. We could see that we stay a little bit above, but still in this deep value zone because we've sort of hit the bottom here. Again, this is our cycle low currently. Well, it's our all time low, excluding this. I think this is an error, to be honest with you, some exchange market manipulation, whatever. I think this is our low personally. So whether we again trail back to this like we've seen before, or we have a bit of a move like this where we bounce and we keep a level close or above the bull market support band it can go either way. Again, we've seen Litecoin have these moves, but ultimately trade lower once they've happened. Again, this move here, we are in the deep value zone. We move up for a little bit. We break above the deep value and we eventually end the halving year, the crypto cycle well below where we were a few weeks ago. It could potentially happen here where we come up to the resistance of this deep value, but then ultimately close the year, the cycle much lower than where we were a few weeks before. It's kind of open for interpretation, but very quickly as well, I do want to speculate on where Litecoin could go during the next cycle. Now, what previous patterns suggest could happen is that Litecoin will spend the majority of its first year or two up at this higher level zone, or at least a year anyway, give or take, just about, probably until sometime mid 2025 to reach this upper band, this completely overbought territory, and then basically spend most of its time going down. Again, we do talk about this sort of year of the mini bull run where a lot of altcoins rally on their Bitcoin and US dollar pairs when they're out of the bull run. It's every four years, slap bang in between the actual bull runs. We could see a move like this happen for Litecoin. I probably think something like that will happen. But for me to give a very rough idea of where I think Litecoin will go, I think we will have put in our overbought territory by this point, And that is June of 2025. I think we will be below our previous deep value range on Bitcoin by mid 2026. I think sometime around 2027, we'll see a bit of a, a rally back up. And then as basically 2027 draws to halfway through the year, I think we will just start to trade downwards and we'll see our sort of two years of negative price movement happen again. But again, just to confirm downward trading until basically 2025, in my opinion, you can see here that we've actually been going down for quite a long time, you know, and if it continues to trade down into the halving, that will be close to a year and a half. So if we bought it out to 2025, that would actually be longer than two years. So I could expect potentially, you know, maybe a up until the end of 2024, close to November, October time before we start to see a bit of a turnaround. Again, people are pricing in a bit of an earlier bull run in crypto, not specifically on the beginning of 2025, potentially we could start seeing drastic gains at the end of 2024, Q4. Again, that's something that's a bit too far away to start relying on or being accurately able to say what will happen. And again, I think it comes down to what the Fed is planning. I think that's about most of what I want to say about Litecoin. Again, I think the Bitcoin pair reveals a lot more than the US dollar pair currently at the moment. Another thing to point out is again, we do often see a little wick above the bull market support band. We could potentially see that here. And if we zoom into where the bull market support band currently is, it's at about 2000 Satoshis. However, in the coming weeks, it will probably drop to somewhere around 
18,000 Satoshis. So we definitely could see a bit of a move above only to retrace. Now we don't necessarily have to come above the bull market support band, but it has been what's happened uh, the last two halvings. But again, nothing in crypto is a certainty. Nothing in life is a certainty. So again, take this with a huge pinch of salt and make your own decisions. These are only charts and nobody has no way of knowing for certain where the markets will go. A very quick look at where the top for Litecoin on its next cycle could be if we drop down to 80%, which is if the, um, the returns keep decreasing in percentage moves and the, 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 dis the distance between the decreases increases. So if it was a quadratic formula, the second difference is increasing. We can see that that would give Litecoin a much smaller range that it could operate within over the next four years. I think this would be very, very interesting if it actually played out within this range, again, down 80% from its previous all time high would be where its cycle high would be for this next coming cycle after this halving up until the next one. A part of me wants that to happen because again, it shows that the coin is much more of a stable asset, but there's no way of knowing for sure whether that will happen. It does seem unlikely to me, however, because Litecoin would have to continuously sell off uh, quite drastically against Bitcoin. And I know we've seen that for a long time now, but I can't see it selling off so badly that a an extreme recovery rally that we might see, you know, as the, as the bull run draws near, bringing it back up to a high of 1400 Satoshis. It just seems very drastic to, to me, but it, it could happen. I'm not saying it can't. I mean, some people might want to move this to 90, saying that it's just a, a plus 20% or a negative 20% each time. If that happened, I think it would be extremely unlikely. It would basically operate within this range. Uh, I wouldn't uh, price that in at all. I'll keep my 60%-ish um, for a safe bet on where I think Litecoin could operate within. Anyway, that about wraps up the video, guys. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Consider subscribing. We're very close to 1,000, and I greatly, hugely appreciate you guys always tuning in and showing support. Comment down below what you want next, or if you think I got something wrong in this video, or something that I just missed and you might think could be an interesting point of view. I love learning from you guys, so please comment down below. Thanks very much. Take care and peace.